Uh, good afternoon, Valley Stream students. Uh, my name is Christian Bowen. I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction in the Valley Stream Central High School District. I'm glad that you're able to join us today for our final Summer Bridge webinar. Uh, if you didn't know already, we've had four, four, uh, four webinars previously. If you go to the website on the Summer Bridge on the bottom right, we have a link to all previous forums and recordings, so you can check those out at your leisure. Uh, and watch them at your own pace. Today we are discussing what will school look like when we return. We have a panel of staff members from multiple buildings who have worked together to help you today. And at this point in time, I'd like to ask them to introduce themselves to the group. Hi guys, I'm Mrs. Grants. I'm the school social worker over at Valley Stream South High School. It's nice to see everybody joining us. Hi, I'm Grace Paridi. I'm one of the school counselors at Valley Stream North. I look forward to seeing everyone in the upcoming year, and it was great seeing everybody in the last few days. Hi, I'm Catherine Cicchetti. I'm a school counselor from Central Hay School, and thank you for joining us today. Hi, I'm Jennifer DeMeo. I'm the Director of Instructional Services. Thank you for joining us, and I'm wishing you all a healthy and happy school year. Thank you very much. Uh, and for those students that have been part of our webinar series, as we've shared previously, uh, our presenters will speak to you. You will see their faces. They will not see or hear you. Uh, and as such, we ask that if you'd like to communicate to anyone on the panel, that you do so through the chat and we will try to address your questions either, as I shared before, throughout the presentation or at the end of the presentation. We appreciate you joining us today. We look forward to seeing you in our schools. We are just days away, no longer weeks. Uh, and again, we're wishing you a great start to the school year, and I'm sure I could speak for the panel. Everyone's excited to have the students back in school, or if they are home during remote instruction, happy to see them on the other side of that screen. Uh, so again, I want to thank the students. At this point in time, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Preeti, who will begin the presentation. Thank you. So as uh, Mr. Bowen has indicated, it definitely we're looking forward to another great school year. As all of you already know, the school year will begin whether you're hybrid or remote on Thursday, September 3rd. Um, and before I go into the system, I wanna explain, and for most of you, this is an overview. Many of you already have looked through the, the opening plan. And many of you already have um, visited the principal panel that was um, presented about a week ago. So this is gonna give you a little bit of overview. In addition, we wanna give you some tips for another successful academic year. We do understand that this year is a little different than the years past in your educational realm, but we do know it's gonna be a successful one as well. So how, how the school year was broken into so in order to meet the guidelines for ROC. So first thing what we did was we had students who have decided to do a hybrid model. We decided to do two groups of students. Last names or household last names from A through L, which you consider cohort A, or hybrid students with the household last name of M through Z. All of you would be group B or cohort B. How the school year is going to flow would be on a four day cycle. What does that mean? The first day of school, as I indicated, is Thursday, September 3rd that day will be A1. The second day of school is going to be Friday, September 4th, which will then be B1. Students will come in. Going into the following week, as we know, we have off on Monday because of Labor Day. So when we return on Sept Tuesday, September 8th, that will be again an A2 schedule. And then the Wednesday will be a B2 schedule. So we'll rotate as the A1, and B1, A2, and B2. So I want all of you to, to understand that because I know we got some questions in the last few days as guidance was part of the program and has come in and asked us some questions. I want everyone to understand as well, this year is gonna look very different than last year in the spring where um, while students from group A or cohort A will be in the building and in school, the students were all home learning remotely will be group B, let's say, or the full remote learners will be virtually attending each class. 
Therefore, when the schedules have been presented, as many of you already have checked the portal, you will look at your program and you will follow your schedule. You'll be using the Teams program in order to check the assignments as well as a class lesson. So everything will be live. I'm going to discuss on slide five, the online class being 30 minutes long. Each class is gonna be 40 minutes, 41 minutes long, four minutes for passing time. For those of you who are home, it will be 30 minutes. And I'll explain that in the future slide. I wanna have Ms. Grant discuss a little bit about organization and time management. Hi guys again. Um, so whether you are going to be learning remotely full time or whether you're using the hybrid model to come to school on some days, time management is going to be key in terms of you getting transitions back into school and to being able to organize your day and structure your day. So whether you're home or whether you're coming to school that day, we want you to get used to waking up at the normal time again. Um, so that means that you're going to wake up each day, whether you're remote or whether you're coming to school and you're going to get ready for the day during during the day okay I know a lot of people during the summer and now we've had even more time we've been home since March we've gotten used to um, going to bed a little bit later waking up a little bit later but really this year we want to emphasize waking up at the same time every day to get yourself back into that routine and that schedule um, just as a reminder too, the self check is going to begin at home for you so if you're coming into school that day we want you to be able to go through that checklist make sure that you don't have any active symptoms of COVID um, or have a fever certainly or anything like that obviously if you do then you're going to be staying home that day and utilizing a sick day and then we'll go through the procedures and protocols from there um, but if you're feeling well and of course we hope that you all are then you're going to be coming into school at the regular time on the days that you're scheduled to come in if you're a hybrid student if you're not and you're remotely learning you're going to start the day the same way and start logging on and making sure that you have your day ready to go with your laptop your computer your device whatever you're using to log on with um, just as a reminder our daily day starts at 7:50 and it ends at 241 that's when your teachers will be available to help you and assist you. I know in the spring a lot of kids were kind of waking up a little bit later and they were having questions and they'd start logging on in the afternoon. Um, you really want to wake up early in the morning, get the day going, you're expected to attend those classes and then if you have questions or need any help or assistance, your teachers and the faculty will be available to help you. Um, we want to encourage you to also end the day at the end of the day for the school day okay we don't expect you to be logging on until all hours of the night and working on assignments you know we want you even if you're home to structure your day so that there's an end point to it the weather is gorgeous out right now it's still going to be really nice during the fall we want you to be able to get out there and go bike riding with your friends and have some you know fun at the end of the day and relax and unwind and not be logged on all day doing school work okay you still have that time and that freedom so set the end point to your day also um, I think the next slide will also be talking about some organization um, and creating a, a positive workstation for yourself. So again, equally as important, what, uh, certainly on those home days, you want to be able to find a space that's all your own. It doesn't have to be a big space. It doesn't have to be an office in your home or anything like that. Just a small enough space where you have a flat surface that you can work on and sitting in a comfortable chair. You want to have decent lighting so you're not squinting at screens or finding yourself having headaches at the end of the day. Um, and you want it to be just distraction free. I tell kids all the time, I'm just as guilty. My phone goes off, it, it chimes. I want to check it. I want to see who's getting in touch with me. So I know for myself, I have to put it on silent mode. I can't be tempted to look at it or, or look over because it, it dings and I want to see who's getting in touch with me. So turn that off into silent mode when you know that you're working so that you won't have that distraction going. You also want to have all your supplies on hand, right? You don't want to be looking for pens and pencils. And if you have a calculator now, I know some of them aren't even solar or battery. They actually have to be charged. So you want to make you have a charging station in your home where you're charging your, your laptop device, the surface that you've received, um, so that you're ready to go and do your work and not fumbling around trying to find supplies. Um, you also probably want to have a snack on hand, a drink on hand, so that you don't have to get up and get down all the time. Um, but you do want to also build in some break times. Again, you're not expected to go for seven, eight, nine hours in a row without some downtime, without some breaks built in, because you will burn out. So take some time for yourself to be able to have some breaks, um, to be able to get up, stretch your legs, come back, and then sit down, and then be ready and focused to go. Uh, I think the next slide is going to talk about the bell schedule. So uh, thank you, Ms. Grant. So just like Ms. Grant indicated, really being organized really is going to be the key of any year for being successful, but even so more so this time around. 
So what I, I encourage all of you to do is to kind of print this screen out or you can go on the website because on the website as well as on the reopening plan, this is going to be our um, schedule. So we have, as, as you can see, the columns, we have the periods of the day, we have the hybrid in-person schedule, and we have the hybrid remote at home schedule. So you want to take a look at that. We encourage all our students to log on for 750. Listen to the announcements, whether you're hybrid or remote. It's nice to hear what's happening throughout the day in the community or any accomplishments from our students, because we do like to post those and have them in our announcements. And then our school will officially begin first period at 8 a.m. And as you can tell, the students that are in person physically in the building will be sitting in that class from 8 a.m. to 841. So, for example, if you have math is scheduled first period in your program, you would make sure you're logged on at home at 8 a.m. Because between 8 a.m. and 830 a.m., the teacher is going to be teaching live. So exactly what the student is seeing in person, you will be seeing on the screen. I want everyone to understand as well, this time around is gonna be a little different than the, than the spring was, and I know we've reiterated that message before. Um, students are expected, we are expected to see the student on the screen. So you won't just have your initials there or an emoji there, it really, you as a person need to be seen there um, because the teachers need to see you're there. Uh, so that's gonna count for every single class. So as you can see, at 9.15, the teacher is going to be closing off the, the lesson, and then you can continue doing the classwork or the assignment given, or that's the time you could take your break, or that could be the time you can make sure all your devices are charged, uh, you can stretch a little bit. And meanwhile, the students that are in, in the classroom, they will continue to be in for another 11 minutes where the teacher can give some assistance around the classroom and walk around, or some mask breaks, depending on what, how the teacher has structured their class. Um, and then the bell will ring and we'll have the four minute passing. And that will continue for period two, period three, period four. So you're gonna follow your schedule. So most of you already printed it out from online. Make sure you have your schedule handy and ready to look at um, and follow it along. So if, for example, lunch is period five, that's from 11 to 11.30 for the hybrid students. You're gonna actually continue until 11.45. You have those 45 minutes, that's when you eat. Make sure you have lunch ready, whether it's a sandwich or a leftover from the night before, because um, that's the time you should eat. And just like Ms. Grant said, really keeping up with a schedule and having a routine and making sure you follow that really will assist in the successful year that we will look for. And looking into the next slide, I want to talk about the next two slides are really going to be dedicated for our students who have special programs. And some of you already know what that's going to look like. So for those students whose parents have decided to um, forego the coming into school and do the hybrid model or remote. So if you're, you're doing the remote model, you'll always be home and you'll be logging in as we discussed in the schedule. For those students who have decided to do the hybrid model, you will follow the cycle as we discussed, whether it's the cycle A or cycle B, depending on your last name. So let's take a look at, at our students who have special education services. And you would know who you are if you do have these services. And if you're not sure, contact your school counselor. We'll be more than happy to guide you and assist you in any way. So for students who are in the resource room program or students who receive co-teaching, um, they will follow the hybrid model that we discussed earlier, which is your four-day A1, A2, B1, B2, depending on the grouping. For those students who are in special class, life skills or the alternative special education program, you will attend, unless your parent has decided to have you fully remote, you will attend school every day, um, Monday to Friday, and you will attend your classes depending on the day A1 or the day A, A or B2 schedule, but you will be in school live at all times. The other group of students that have um, a different format as well as we look at the next screen is uh, our English language learners. Those are our ELL students. So for those students who are level one and level two, um, as we indicated in the other programs, you will attend school in person every day. And for those students who are in the level three, level four, and level five, you will follow the, the four day hybrid schedule, the cycle, as we discussed earlier. And if you're not sure which program you fall into, contact your school counselor and we'll be more than happy to assist you. 
Okay, so in terms of technology, all students are going to receive devices this year, whether you are remote or hybrid. Each student will receive an HP ProBook, which has an attached keyboard and trackpad and can be folded completely to use it as a tablet. Hybrid students who are coming into school, I know Ms. Grant already mentioned this, but it's very important you have the device with, with you and then you have it charged up, kind of like you would treat your cell phone. Um, make sure you charge it the night before. Something to keep in mind is that everything is going to run through Teams this year, even attendance. Students should be very familiar with Teams since that is what we used when we went remote back in March. Instruction will all be paperless. Even if you are in person, you will be using your devices to submit assignments. Teachers will be sharing their screens with you while they teach via Teams so that all students have access. And then lastly, etiquette rules. Our tech committee is working on developing online etiquette rules for all students. You will be expected to act in a dignified way and to use your devices for school content only. It's important to remember these devices are school property. Teachers and administrators have access to everything you post, so make sure it's appropriate. Now on to our grading system. Very simply, all schools will return to the pre-COVID standard grading policy, so we're back to numerical grades. We did switch over to pass-fail at one point, um, but that is not the plan for this year. Students, just, in keep, just keep in mind you will be held accountable for your schoolwork and your grades. Um, as a school counselor, I always tell my students, these grades are going to be posted on your permanent transcript that colleges are going to see. You know, so take it seriously, put in your best efforts um, because it is your future. And the next slide, we're gonna pass it over to Ms. Grant with common concerns. Hi again, guys. So we, we tried to put together some common concerns to answer some questions that may have come up for you in your mind as you've been thinking about returning to school. Just keep in mind, please, that this is very fluid, meaning that it's forever changing. Um, you know, what we're saying today could slightly change, you know, before we go back or even as we go back, things could change as new issues come up. So these are current as of the moment, but that could, of course, change. So when you come into school this year, you will always be required to wear a mask throughout the day as well as any school buses that you may be taking. Um, students who don't have a mask, the school district will be providing them to students, but we encourage you to keep one with you, keep it back up in your bag because things happen. I know that even as I've been out and about every now and then I will lose it or lose track of it and I keep extra ones in my car. So it's a good idea to kind of have a backup with you anyway. Um, teachers are going to be providing mass breaks daily when students are distanced and it's safe to do so. So, you know, just to kind of give you that break time from the mask. Um, students, yes, you will be able to have lunch this year. It's going to be what we're calling a grab-and-go kind of style lunch. So meaning that it's going to be prepackaged for you so that you don't have people, you know, touching it or pointing things out and it will be a little bit um, streamlined as far as how you receive that lunch. Um, students are going to be encouraged to bring in personal hand sanitizer for yourself and of course wash your hands frequently throughout the day to try to keep as clean as possible. Um, we're also telling students that you can bring in your own water bottle but please have it labeled with your name of course so that it doesn't get confused with someone else's. Um, and I think we have on our next slide a, a, another few concerns that are common also. Um, I think somebody had typed in previously uh, when we first started asking about lockers. Lockers are not going to be available as of right now, so students should plan to bring their materials in a backpack, something that they can carry around during the day. Your teachers know that you don't have lockers and they're going to try very hard to not have you carrying around, you know, 40, 50, 60 pound backpacks. We realize that you will have them during the day and in the hallways, so your teachers will be aware of that and be helping you to not have to have so many books during the day to carry. On physical education days, please come dressed and prepared because again, the locker rooms are not currently available to you. Um, we are encouraging students to be able to go outside and to be able to utilize physical education as a break time and a downtime um, to be able to get some fresh air, but you're going to have to be prepared for those days that you have phys ed dressed appropriately for a gym. As, uh, as I said before, things are fluid, things are forever changing. Uh, we had to change our PowerPoint just before we came on because as of today, Nassau County Section 8 for Sports and Athletics said that sports will no, not be starting now in September. They are going to have a modified season starting as of January of 2001. So all three seasons will be condensed into, I believe, nine-week periods to try to 
to try to get all of the sports in, but starting in January as of right now. Um, some of the clubs that we offer will be st still offered. They're going to be offered possibly remotely this year. I know the district is working hard to figure out which clubs we can still try to run um, to be able to give you guys an outlet, to be able to still have some fun and have activities going on. We just may need to change the modality in which we utilize those clubs for now. Um, of course, if you have a fever that day, you know, we spoke about doing this, the check in the morning. So hopefully you will have already known that you had a fever, but if for some reason you spike a fever on the way into the building and you have a fever, um, students will then be sent to a quarantine isolation room that will of course be monitored by a staff member and a parent will be required to pick you up. Um, if a positive case comes out in our district that will immediately be reported to the um, Nassau County Department of Health and we will be following all of the regulation uh, CDC guidelines that have been put out. And I think our next slide is about cleaning. Cleaning. So cleaning, very important. The district is taking this very seriously. Um, during the day, all CDC and Department of Health guidelines will be followed. Bathrooms will be checked hourly to ensure that supplies are available. All high contact surfaces will be sanitized regularly. There will be wipes avail available for desks and shared surfaces. There will be new air filters installed so that will have the air be pulled from outside. And hand sanitizer towers have been installed. Um, and I also know that teachers are allowed to keep their windows and doors open at all times. Um, and then at night, once all students and staff have left the building, all classrooms will be thoroughly cleaned and sanitized. And now lastly, and I think most importantly, we realize that as students, you have been through a lot and that there are so many changes going on and that you may have mixed feelings about coming back and what our new normal is. So we wanna make sure we are addressing your social emotional needs. On the first day, all students will have a welcome back SEL lesson that will take place in your first period class. This lesson will serve as an initial check-in to create a safe, encouraging, and supportive space for students to thrive in both emotionally and academically. Small check-in groups will be created to focus on SEL. They will meet weekly for 30 minutes and be facilitated by PPS staff and faculty. Topics covered will include, but are not limited to, coping strategies, mindfulness, brain breaks, team building, etc. These groups will be used throughout the year to implement the SEL school counseling curriculum and activities. A universal screener will be distributed to all students school-wide with parental consent approximately six weeks into the school year to help identify student needs. We want to give you as students some time to get adjusted, but then we do want to collect data from the screener so that it will help us create activities and services to address the needs of our community. In addition, the committee will revisit, revisit a partnership with Northwell Health to ensure access for our students, parents, staff, and faculty to outside mental health services, in addition to other community-based organizations. Um, so overall, we want to make sure your social emotional needs are being addressed. I know that in all of the buildings, our PPS staff, counselors, social workers, psychologists, um, the teachers, we're all here to help you and assist you, and our doors are always open. Um, this is actually the end of our presentation at this time. If you have any questions, you know, please feel free to submit them in the text box right now. Thank you. Just to share with the students participating, there was a question about lockers and as the panelists presented, there will be no lockers this year. And there was another question about uh, logging in for class. So whether you're in person or whether you're remote, we will be using the Microsoft Teams platform. You will be on multiple teams. You'll see those populate over the next few days before school starts. Um, you'll be on a team for each class that you have and your teachers will be scheduling meetings for you in order to um, conduct that live instruction. So you will go to that team and you will join the live meeting at the time that you're assigned according to the bell schedule. And there's another question, are we allowed to bring food? Yes, you are still allowed to bring food with you to the school building if you do not want to purchase food from the cafeteria. There's another question, when will the small check-in groups for social emotional learning meet? 
those will We'll start the social emotional learning groups after the beginning of school once we have the lesson and we can identify the needs of the students. So you would look to maybe the second or third week of school. We'll start checking in in small groups. However, if you do have a need that you feel is imminent and you'd like to speak with someone in the school, your counselor is your first person to speak to and determining how serious your need is or whatever your requirements are, they'll be sure to refer you to the appropriate personnel so that we can get you the help that you need. Another question is, when will students who are new to the schools but not in seventh grade have an orientation? That'll be scheduled individually at each school. So you should contact your guidance counselor at the school so that they could get that information for you so that you feel welcomed and oriented to your new building. Great questions, guys. Does anyone else have a question that they want to pop into the chat? What about the items that I need to return, like my math calculator? Okay, so a question about calculators or returning anything that you did not return. You will return those when you come to school if, if the teacher wants them back. The math calculator you'll probably keep to use again for the next school year. Um, you don't have to bring those items on the first day of school. You can ask your teacher in the appropriate content area what you should do with the items and then they will direct you. There's a question about the supply list. Do you recommend certain supplies? So because this year is so different and things were determined by the governor and we were set to act in August, we have not sent out supply lists as we normally would. We're also, as you know, distributing devices to kids. So your, your laptop's gonna be your primary supply that you need to bring. As the panelist said, charged and ready every single day. I would also recommend that you bring your charger with you in case your power goes low throughout the day. Um, and just to start school, I would bring one notebook or one binder with a pen or a pencil so that you can take notes if that's how you choose to take notes. And your individual teachers on the first day will tell you what it is that you need to bring and everyone will be understanding. Nobody is going to expect you to go out the first night of school and make sure you have everything you need for the second day. All right, so don't worry about that. We'll give you time to get what it is. If people want specific supplies for their classes, you'll be instructed on the first day and you'll be given time to acquire those supplies. Another question is, will the existing plan undergo changes after the first marking period, or is this expected to stay the same throughout the entire year? I like how the panelists have said things are changing on a daily basis. Right now, this is our reopening plan. This is the plan we're intending to go forward with until we're directed in another direction. If the state of health and vaccination and uh, the pandemic improves, and the governor gives us permission to change, then we will adapt. If things go in the other direction, as you know, we're prepared to go remote. So we will, uh, we will adapt as necessary, but the plan for reopening is an indefinite plan as of now. Can we still view the three previous webinars that were presented? Yes, you can view all of the webinars. You can also view, and they're really wonderful if you haven't had the chance to check them out, the Summer Bridge newsletters that have been sent out to families every Friday for the past four weeks. If you go to our district website, which is vschsd.org, it's the initials for the Valley Stream Central High School District. On the right panel, you will see a link to the Summer Bridge and if you click through to that link, you'll be able to access uh, the recordings of the webinars and the recordings uh, and the copies of all the newsletters. I encourage you to do that. I think it's a great start. Uh, and the counselors and social workers, psychologists and teachers that have put together these presentations have done a really excellent job of supporting our school community. Has the day one, day two schedule changed for hybrid learners? We're still on a day one, day two schedule, but in order to get both group A and group B in school on both day one and day two, we are doubling up. So as explained, I think on the third slide, we are going to have two day ones 
followed by two day twos, followed by two day ones, followed by two day twos. So in effect, we have a four day cycle. So it's cohort A, day one, cohort B, day one, cohort A, day two, cohort B, day two. And we will rotate through the calendar year that way. Any other questions for anyone? Is there a printed calendar yet? The printed calendar is expected shortly. Uh, it will be sent home and, and posted on the website as soon as it's ready for publication. The schedule says band day two but not day one. So you will have a different class than on day one and you will have band on day two. Some of our classes meet every day. Some of our classes meet every other day. If there is um, a hole in your schedule, if you have nothing scheduled for that period day one, you should contact the school counselor so that they could review the schedule with you and make sure that you're scheduled for everything that you need to be scheduled for. Okay, so if there are no other questions, I'm going to thank Mrs. Paridi, Ms. Chiquetti, and Ms. Grant for being here with us and putting together such a thoughtful presentation. Thank you for all of the participants and for the excellent questions. And again, we wish you a wonderful beginning to the school year, and we're here to support you in any way that we can. Thank you very much.